Have you wanted to start tutoring online, but the technology piece holds you back and you're not even sure what platform you will use to get started, but you know for certain that you don't want to travel to people's houses or set up shop at the library or a coffee shop? This video is for you today. I'm going to show you how to use Zoom to get started in your online tutoring business so you can start seeing $1,000 a month in the beginning and skyrocket your business to totally replace your teaching income. Did you know that 80% of learners feel more engaged in the learning process when they can see their tutor's face? And that's why showing up on Zoom is the perfect solution if you don't wanna go to other people's houses and you want to get more clients in. The great thing about online tutoring is that you can see more clients from the comfort of your own home. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use Zoom and get you started so you can learn all the basics. To get started on Zoom, you're gonna need your own account. Now they do have a free version, I believe. So you're going to need to figure out which plan you'd like, basic plan. You can have a meeting up to 40 minutes. I currently have a pro plan so that my meetings can go longer and I can have more features, but that just depends on what you'd like. So after you set up an account, you will have a profile like this. And the first thing you're going to need to do to set up an online tutoring plan is to create a meeting for that. So you will click meetings over here on the left-hand side, and then you're going to do schedule a meeting. So this is where you would write tutoring or name it based on the client. You might put their initials. You're going to pick the date. Let's say it's two weeks from now, meeting at 5 p.m. If the duration is only gonna be 30 minutes, let's say, then I'll change that. The time zone, that is important. You want the person to know what your time zone is. Then if it's going to happen every Tuesday for a month, you could set up recurring meeting and that's perfect. And then you will also want to add the whiteboard in case you want to draw on anything. You might need to add a document for that as well. And I highly encourage you to have a passcode. So you can change this to whatever makes sense. You might make it the kid's name or um, a fun word like cookie, for example. And then you always want a waiting room because you don't want them to jump in without you knowing it in case you have left your computer up and you need to go grab something really quick. I also like to have the participants, you can have their video turn on right away. That's great for little kids in case they don't know how to do that. So I would encourage that. And then you want to have their audio on as well. There are more things you can do. You can mute the participants upon entry. This one is really great if you are tutoring a pod of kids and you don't want everybody coming in talking loud. If you have more than one kid too, then you don't wanna hear the background sounds or even one family. I've tutored kids before where their parents are watching TV in the background. They don't have a good space for their kiddo and they're not really considering the fact that you can hear everything. So that is the settings for setting up a meeting. Um, from there, you can use different options. I'm going to go ahead and show you if I just wanted to start a meeting right now, different things that I can do. So I'm going to open up my personal room. I'm just going to say start, allow. The great thing about Zoom too is that you can do this on an iPad. You could do this on your phone. Worst case scenario, I prefer to use my laptop. So here I am live on Zoom, and I'm gonna show you some features that you yourself can use. So if I don't wanna show my background for whatever reason, I can go to where this, it says stop video, but I wanna hit the little carrot menu and I can blur my background. So if there's something behind me I don't really wanna show, I think this is a really nice feature. You can kind of see some things, but it definitely does blur the back background. I can also stop the video if I need to step away, but I'd also want to mute as well if I was going to do that. Something else that you might want to invest in is having a 
some kind of a microphone. This is a Yeti microphone, but you might even just use at first the old iPhone headphones. They work perfectly fine. They have a microphone attached to them and it's just something that's going to enhance the sound for your participant and then it's going to cut out the background sound. You yourself will probably want to recommend to your student that they do not have a background sound going. Um, so if they have noise canceling headphones, that really does help. Okay, I'm going to unblur my background. I could also choose a virtual background if I had something that I wanted to add. I would have to have a photo. Um, I don't currently have anything uploaded, but you could totally change that. I think that's a fun option, um, but definitely not important at, in the beginning just to get started on Zoom with your tutoring. Okay, back to that. All right, so if anybody comes and joins during the meeting, let's say you're tutoring more than one kid at a time, you will hear a ding and you can let them in from the waiting room. Some other features of Zoom that are really interactive is having the whiteboard. So that's gonna be in the bottom where it says whiteboard and you can click that and you can do new whiteboard. And then I can use this for a variety of things. I can have questions up here if we're maybe if we're practicing multiplication facts, let's say, and then the student can have access to it as well. And so what you do for that is you just give them privileges to be able to write on the whiteboard. They can take a tool and they can write the answer. They will love this feature, especially the little kids, but it's a great way to actually tutor online and be able to show them things. You can add things to it. You can put a sticky note. Um, you can do a comment if they're working on something. It's a great feature. You can also save the whiteboard and use it again from a previous session. If you want to, if you ran out of time, you want to show them something else. Then I'm going to close that whiteboard. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you is that students can do emoji reactions. If you need people to raise their hand, you can use any of the emojis down here and it'll put them up on the screen. I know when I taught first grade online, my whole class loved to do those, but I've tutored online a bunch and students like those as well. You can also have the chat going to the side. You may disable that though in settings. So I would encourage you when you get started tutoring online, and if you aren't as familiar with Zoom, to really go through the settings and make sure that you have everything that is comfortable to you so that there, if kids in the chat, if that bothers you, then you need to get rid of that. Also, before you get on to Zoom, you want to test out your microphone and there is a way to do that. You can even do it while you're on here now. So I can click uh, where it says mute and the little carrot. I can do test speaker and microphone, test, test, test and then it will play it back to me. And if I hear it, I say yes to that. And then hear the replay, yes. So then I know my microphone is working. Um, that is an important feature of Zoom for sure. Like I mentioned before, you're gonna wanna play around in settings before you actually start your first online Zoom tutoring session. So this is in the left-hand side. I just scrolled down to settings and you're gonna wanna go through every single one and decide what you want to allow. So sharing access, um, if you want to send email notifications, uh, if you want to share the whiteboard with the co-host as well, if you only want you, then change that up. Um, if you want to have chat going on, this is also important if you want to record your video then you could toggle this over and have that saved and there's a lot of ai tools that are newer to this now too um, you also should look at data and privacy just so that you're aware of what the settings are and making sure that you're comfortable with all of those so zoom really is a plug and play. You're just going to get on and start tutoring. Uh, make sure that you have a way to also show students what you're working on. I like using a document camera. I have a whole nother YouTube video on my favorite tech tools that I'll link in the description box below. And Zoom really is user friendly and one of my favorite ways to tutor online. I hope you found this YouTube video helpful on how to get started using Zoom in your online tutoring business. And if you're ready for more, you already have clients or you're looking to get 
more clients and set up a perfectly streamlined online tutoring business that is highly profitable, check out my online course, Tutorpreneur Academy. I'll leave it in the description box below. It's perfect for anybody who's just starting out or completely in the middle of their journey but wanting to scale up and earn more money in their tutoring business. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.